floss tube friends welcome back it is Sunday December 29th and this is my favorite time of the year I think I really like the days between Christmas and New Year's Eve when the chaos and the stress of the holidays is kind of over and most people aren't working like most people are off between Christmas and the second. So um, I'm certainly not working. So there's just a few days between the 26th and the 31st to hang out at home, wear pajamas every day, <laughs> stay up late, sleep in, um, enjoy visiting with friends and family who are in town, doing a lot of stitching, staying in pajamas all day. I, I just really like these days between um, the last year and the new year. I've been doing a lot of reflection on 2019 and a lot of planning for 2020. It's just a good time. So um, let's see, I saw you last in November before Thanksgiving. November and December were busy months. I have been very busy at work. Um, I am working on a new show for ABC. It is called For Life. I will put a link below to where you can see the trailer. It will air sometime mid-February. Um, I don't know, I'm pretty proud of this show. <laughs> it's been a really great experience. Everybody in the cast and crew is just so, so nice. I really, really enjoy going to work every day, which is not not always the case, <laughs> or hasn't always been the case on other, other shows. So um, it's based on a true story, which I think, um, I think the story is pretty inspiring. I will, um, I'll, I'll put the link below to the trailer if you wanna check it out. And uh, you know, maybe if you're interested, you can keep your eye out for it in February when it airs. So, so yes, so work's been busy between November and December. Well, it's still December. No, work was busy in November and December up until the holidays. My mom visited us for Thanksgiving, which was great. We went to go see the Rockefeller Center tree and we did a fantastic tour of the Rockefeller Center art, the free public art on the outside. There's a really fantastic tour about the art deco style art um, commissioned by the Rockefellers in that area. So if you're ever in the city and you're interested in Art Deco, I highly recommend it. It's like an hour long walking tour with uh, mostly outside. I've done it before with my dad and um, each tour guide is a little bit different and puts their own spin on the tour. So it was almost a completely different tour when we did it with my mom. So that was really fun. Um, my husband cooked Thanksgiving. He cooked a fantastic turkey and some delicious pies and some delicious sides. Let's see, then um, not too long after Thanksgiving, we celebrated my birthday. And then, you know, December is always such a whirl whirlwind because Thanksgiving happens and then um, the holiday parties start right after, you know, right after Thanksgiving, we decorate the house, we put up the tree, the holiday parties start, then it's my birthday, and then it's time for Christmas and um, every other year we travel. So this year we traveled to Ontario to spend Christmas with my family. We left uh, on the 21st and came back on the 26th. So it was a bit of a whirlwind, but we managed to see everybody and we had a really nice Christmas. And um, yeah, it was just a good trip. So we've since then I've been doing some reorganizing around the house, a little bit of cleaning, and we have guests coming um, this evening to stay with us until after the new year. My best friend um, is visiting from Colorado with her boyfriend, so they will be coming tonight um, or possibly tomorrow morning, depending on the train schedule and how they're feeling. And uh, they will be staying with us until 2020, which is exciting. So that's a nice life chatter, <laughs> I think. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about stitching. So. Um, the last time I saw you, I said I wanted to finish nine whips by the end of the year. Um, I did not finish nine, but I did pretty good. So let's start with FFOs. So first of all, 
I did fully finish Horsin' Around, which I gifted to my mom for Christmas. Obviously Christmas is past. I no longer have it with me, but I will insert a picture here of how it looked finished. Unfortunately, so I stitched that with color and cotton threads. Unfortunately, although Angela says her threads are color fast, I did have some bleeding in the red thread. I didn't go back to check the label to see. It's possible she indicated on, the, on that specific color it wasn't color fast. If I recall, it came in last year's mystery Christmas box, which I know had some hand dyed silks that were not color fast. So it's possible I mixed one up. In any case, there's a little bit of bleeding on the red. Um, I rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it and managed to get most of it out. However, um, my lady has, uh, her white pants became pink and her white mittens became pink. <laughs> and there's a little bit of bleeding in the snow and around her, but it, it looked okay. Um, my mom liked it. She said it was cute. She hung it on her tree. I also, um, I also had a start to finish that I fully finished. I um, had a Secret Santa event at work and the person I got was a member of the camera department, one of the camera operators. So um, what I usually like to do for Secret Santas is I like to stitch them an ornament and then just hang that ornament around um, something else I think they'll enjoy. Um, often if I don't know the person very well, I'll get them a bottle of wine or something. In this case, I got him a bottle of whiskey because that is, seemed to be what he liked and I uh, just hung an ornament around it. So I will, um, so first of all, let me show you a picture. I have no pattern for this ornament. I found a picture on Pinterest that I liked and wanted to replicate. I searched all over the internet and I could not find the source for this picture. There was no pattern attached to the picture. It was just the image. I will insert an image here of the image I saw on the internet. If you know, I assume this is from a magazine. Um, again, there was no pattern or finishing instructions. It was just this image was all that I found. I did reverse image searches. I looked all over online. I could not find the source. So if you happen to know what magazine this came from or who designed it, I would love to know so I can credit them. And also because I would like to restitch this um, properly. <laughs> Basically, I looked at the picture and then kind of drafted like self-drafted um, an ornament based on it, based on it, just by looking at the picture. And, uh, you know, then I struggled with the finishing of it. So, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> in the magazine or instructions for this, this ornament, as the designer made it, that there would be finishing instructions that would have helped me. So I would like to stitch this again for other photography lovers in my life. So if you know the source of this design, please comment below. Um, so anyway, I will insert a picture of the one I did. I think it turned out pretty cute. Unfortunately, um, my Secret Santa exchange partner was not there the day we did Secret Santa, so I did not get to see him open it, and I don't know if he did open it. His coworkers said that they would pass it along to him. <laughs> Hopefully he received it and liked it. If not, it's okay. Um, I know that when I give things away, they're not always guaranteed to be appreciated, as, especially when you're gifting to non-stitchers, right? You don't know if they're gonna appreciate it as much as they should, <laughs> or, you know, you don't know if they'll appreciate the amount of work you put into it because they don't know. But uh, with little things like that, I don't mind. It only took a day or so, you know, start to finish. And uh, I really enjoy the process of making little ornaments and kind of figuring things out. And like I said, I think I would like to stitch a, a, a better version of that same ornament for some of the other photography lovers in my life for the future. So in any case, okay, so that is FFO number two. Um, a little bit long-winded though. FFO number three, another little ornament. I um, We have some friends who I've stitched a couple ornaments for in the past, usually in relation to something humorous that happened that year. They're uh, Dylan's friends, uh, but they're my friends now. <laughs> they started as Dylan's friends. When you, when you get married, you inherit friends, right? Anyway. Um, FFO number three is this little ornament I made. It is a bottle. It's supposed to be a bottle of Tito's. 
in relation to a incident where a bottle of Tito's went missing at the lake house over the summer. It's an inside joke. I hope they appreciate it. It only took me a couple hours to whip this together. Um, I used uh, some copper colored Krynic, and then I just backed it with some cheap Michaels fabric. You can see the, my seams aren't, little stuffing coming out of my seams there, but anyway, so I whipped that up on the 27th to give to them when we see them on New Year's. And lastly, um, I finished my secret stitch. So you guys saw this last in Mania when I started it and haven't seen it since. It is a secret stitch, secret stitch. <laughs> it is a gift for my friend, Jessica, who um, is visiting this week. So um, I'm not gonna post this video until I gift it to her so I can show it in the video. So um, my friend, she, um, you know how, so some people, when they have an event to celebrate, might um, purchase themselves a bottle of wine or, um, you know, a nice bottle of liquor to unwind and celebrate with. She doesn't drink. Uh, when she wants to celebrate, she purchases herself some expensive cheese, <laughs> usually some very expensive, delicious brie cheese. So um, I wanted to stitch her. I, this design can be found in uh, Veronique Ingenieurs. <laughs> I'll link it below on Amazon. Her uh, leaflet, um, Reflet des Montagnes, or Souvenir des Montagnes, Mountain Souvenirs. Um, I will link it below where you can purchase it on French Amazon. So this design can be found in the leaflet. There is supposed to be a cow at the bottom of the design. However, I left the cow and just included the important thing, which is the cheese. So here it is. You can see, yep, three wheels of brie cheese. And I just framed it in a Michael's frame. The frame is a little bit too big for the design, but I'll live with it. This was a fun stitch because it wasn't very many colors. I like the continental style. A lot of half stitches in there. So yeah, so that. Okay, so those are my four FFOs. And I have three other finishes to show you. So I said in my last video, I wanted to finish nine whips by the end of the year. I finished four whips um, and had two start to finishes. So the little ornaments were the start to finishes that cheese one was one whip. Um, here are the last, the other three whips I finished. <laughs> so uh, first up, you probably saw this on Instagram that I completed this. Um, this is ABC Forret. It is a Brodery.net freebie. I also refer to it as my oh dear design. I will insert a picture here of where you saw it last time. And here it is all complete. I am so relieved to have this done. This is stitch two over two on 28 count Mugana in the colorway navy. It's uh, from Swigart using DMC 680. Took about two and a half skeins to do this whole project. There's supposed to be an alphabet in this empty space up here, but I really didn't think it needed it and didn't want to stitch it. I have enough alphabets <laughs> hanging in my house already, so. There we go. So my plan is to FFO this as a pillow. The next whip I finished, I am really glad to have this one done. You might have also seen this on Instagram. This is Meredith Marks Designs um, Whales. This is a kit I got on eBay. Uh, it is also a gift for a friend. Um, I will insert a picture here of where you saw it last. And as you can see, I powered through <laughs> and finished it. It wasn't a, that much stitching with the whales. Geez, that was a lot of gray to work through. So there it is. This is stitched two over two on 36 count Lugana, I believe. No, 32 count Lugana by Picture This Plus in the colorway Helix. Just this mottled gray color. I think it turned out pretty beautiful. Quite pleased with that. So that's done and I'm relieved that it's done because I don't know. Once I got once I got to the point where I was where all the this water was in, 
where I had outlined one of these colors all the way around, actually I started to enjoy it and it went fast. I think I was just having severe counting anxiety about the border of the waves matching up. And that was um, what was giving me a hard time. So once that was all in and the whales were outlined, it was really easy. It was just filling in, you know, the second color and the back stitch and filling in the whales. It went really quickly. So it wasn't so bad towards the end. I'm finding if I just sit and focus on one project or one or two projects at a time, I can get a lot done, which I think is something I need to take to heart in 2020. Moving forward, maybe that's the way to do things. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. And um, I wasn't planning on finishing this last one this year. I thought I would get to it next year, but I was feeling festive um, around Christmas and I happened to bring this with me to Canada because it was, I don't know, uh, prairie schoolers are easy to stitch when visiting with people, I think, because they're often big blocks of color. And uh, I had a lot of just filling in to do, so I thought it would be easy to bring. I wasn't expecting to finish it, and I did. I finished this Christmas morning. So this is the prairie schooler Santa, the poinsettia Santa, or the gardening Santa. I will insert a picture here of where you saw him last. And here he is, all done. Um, hockey Santa is still over there next to him. I haven't worked on the Hockey Santa in a bit, but. So this is stitched uh, two over two on DMC Irish Linen. And I made some color changes. So, as I think I've said in my Mania video, oops, um, I changed the red to DMC 347. The red for the poinsettias I changed to DMC 349. And I think everything else is as charted. The skin is as charted. Oh, the only other thing is I changed the brown for these pots because I got to a point on Christmas morning when the only thing I had left were these pots and the color called for was 632, which I didn't have with me. It was missing. But I did have DMC 310, which is this color, which I think is an appropriate color for a terracotta pot. So I used that color just so I could finish it. So, um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with him. Okay, so let's talk about whips. So, um, as you can probably tell, primarily I worked on the things that I finished. Those six things were my main focus over the past month, but I did work on a little bit on a couple other things. So I did a little bit of work on my maple sugar pro project. Let me see if I can find. So this is a picture of what it will look like complete. This is a heart of the country design called maple sugar. I purchased it at a consignment store in Pennsylvania and uh, restarted the chart. So I will insert a picture here of where you saw it last time. And here is where I'm at now. So I've done quite a bit. Um, some work on the building next to the dad. Got three trees finished. I have one more tree to go. The dad is complete. I think he needs some back stitching, maybe. So I really just have this side of the design to complete. I think um, if I put my mind to it, I can easily finish this in 2020. I'm looking forward to completing it. I've been working on this whip, I think, since 2018. 2018? Or 2017. I think since. I don't remember. <laughs> a while. I've been working on this a while. I also did a little bit of work on ink circles, the birds and the bees. Most of you are familiar with what this looks like. I will insert a picture of where you saw it last time in my whip parade. And then here is where I'm at. So it's still on the scroll rods. Oops. There we go. Um, 
um, I think I just worked a little bit down this way. This is being stitched one over two with a dinky dye silk and um, on picture this plus barn wood in 40 count. I think this is going to be really beautiful when it's completed. It's just taking a long time. The fabric is dark. It needs to be pulled very tight for me to see the holes. did also a very small amount of work on I also did a small amount of work on turn turn uh, I took this class with Carmen Broadway stitcher and Debbie stitched the stash um, November 2018. I was hoping to have this finished by the end of the year. Um, no such luck. I ran out of the um, autumn leaves color floss and had to order some more and had to wait for it to come in. And then by the time it did, I just knew I wasn't going to have it done. So I decided to focus on gifts instead. But um, I did a little bit of work on it. I will insert a picture here of where you saw it last time. Here it is now. I think the only thing I did was work a little bit on, this is upside down, um, a little bit on this green over here. But I did work on it, I swear. I've completed the whole, the first page of this design, so I have one page left. I feel good about finishing this in 2020. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I've been working on, this is the one I've been working on this week since I finished my Prairie Schooler Santa, I actually feel like if I just concentrated on it tonight and tomorrow morning, I could actually probably finish this before the end of the year. So I'm gonna go for it. If I don't finish this, if I don't finish this before my friends arrive, then I'm going to put it back in my whip pile and it will be a year of whip project in 2020. Um, but if I do finish it, <laughs> then I can add a new start to my year of whip pile for 2020. So in any case, we'll see. I'll we'll let the fates decide. Um, so this is Little House Needleworks, one more stitch. We'll show you the chart. It's got a lady and a house. Um, I purchased this secondhand. You can only purchase this as a kit, I think, with all the called for flosses, but I purchased this secondhand, so it was just the chart. So I am using um, silks from a Dinky Dyes Oops Pack. If you have questions about the colors, let me know and I will answer them. Um, but the details are all found in my Mania video. Um, so I will insert a picture of where you saw it last time. And here, here it is now, still in the Q-Snap. So um, what I have left is I have to finish this table. There's a vase that goes on it. Um, I have to do the armchair over here that the lady's sitting in. There's a bird that goes here. I have to put some leaves on these trees. Um, there's a flower and a vine that comes down over this way. And then there's uh, two more lines of alphabet to do down here. And that's all I have, that's all I have left. Um, I mean, it's not impossible to finish it before my friends arrive, but we all know that stitching letters well, I think stitching letters always takes longer than I think it's going to take. So, yeah. So that's it for whips. So let's talk a little bit about stitchy kindness. I've gotten a little bit of stitchy kindness this holiday season. So the last time I spoke to you, I was just about to send out my Harry Potter stitch exchange project. And I sent that out and she received it and she loved it, and I'm so thrilled. Mm, coffee. Since I recorded, I have received um, my exchange package. So um, let me show you what she stitched. Um, so um, Vicki was the person who stitched for me, and she sent this beautiful card. 
um, you're going to freak out if you haven't already seen this on Instagram. I, I told, um, so we had to fill out like what our favorite characters were and what house we were in and all, all that. And I listed Hermione and Crookshanks and Dobby as my favorite characters because they are. And uh, look what she stitched me. Isn't this amazing? First of all, her stitches are perfect. Look how neat those are. Second of all, this is huge. It's the size of my head. Look at that cat. Look at Crookshanks. I love this. Got some really cute backing fabric. And she said, um, she told me in her card that this is, um, the colorway for this fabric is Rosmerta, <laughs> which she thought was perfect for a Harry Potter design. So thank you, Vicki. I love this. It sits on display on a shelf so I can look at it in my stitchy spot every day. I love it. She also sent, um, with, with the, with the pillow, she also sent me a Plum Street Samplers chart, Llama Lump, which I'm excited to start maybe this year, next year, 2020, maybe. <laughs> She sent me um, some fabric from her local needle. Ne she sent me some fabric from her local needlework store. This is um, 28 count Cyprium, which is a hand dyed fabric. Like a beautiful, like almost looks like um, copper that's getting rusty. You know how copper gets that patina color. It's gorgeous. She sent me a little Dobby character. Now that I've shown you guys this stuff, I can finally take them out of the box. <laughs> Some cat scissors. And a Harry Potter themed floaty pen. And um, this cute little pouch that says, when in doubt, go to the library. Some wise advice. Um, I also got some stitchy kindness from Candice, Love Lover Stitches. She sent a little bag of goodies in which she included some uh, Gentle Art floss. This is Midnight. Ooh, that blue color. It looks even better on camera than it does in real life. And she sent a little needle book that she made, as well as some bobbins and some orange peels. Um, if you're not familiar with these, I learned about these at the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat. These are like these little things. You put them on the edge of your Q-snap to hold the extra fabric up. Genius. Genius. I also got some stitchy kindness from Dawn, Frosty X-Stitch, my Swiss friend. She um, sent some delicious Swiss chocolate, which I cannot show you because it has been consumed. Sorry. <laughs> but it was delicious. Um, she also sent me these adorable pin pin um pin cushion pins they're bees it says just bees just because it's little bees i love them and she sent some little scissors and this adorable hedgehog pouch which i love and i actually have a hedgehog ornament on my tree that looks very similar to this guy so thank you don And last but not least, I got a little bit of stitchy stuff for Christmas. So my brother-in-law got me, got me this t-shirt. says, stay crafty. <laughs> I love it. He also got me some beautiful scissors. I don't know where he got these. I haven't tried cutting with them yet, but look how beautiful those are. They're very sharp. And he got me this little cross-stitch kit with uh, some flamingos on it, which I just think is so cute. So that'll be a quick stitch. And um, my husband, I got some gift cards from my parents and my husband didn't get me any stitchy stuff, um, but he did get me this um, quilting book um, because I've been sewing and I've been quilting. I know. I guess let's talk about sewing, because that's it for kindness. Let's talk about sewing. So um, 
This book was recommended by Julie, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World, and Debbie stitched the stash. Um, so I asked for it for my birthday for my husband, and he indulged me. It's quilt as you go, made modern. I have not made any projects from this book yet, but I'm very excited. Um, and I've already, I've already picked out one that I would like to start. So um, I have been, um, I have been sewing, and I have been learning to quilt. I never thought when I when I decided I wanted to learn to sew and get a sewing machine, I never thought that quilting would be something I would do. I just assumed I would never be good enough to do anything that complicated and that the only thing I would make would be little cross stitch pillows and maybe some pillows for my living room and maybe hem my pants. That was like what I thought I was going to do with sewing. Um, I purchased this June Taylor Quilt As You Go table runner kit in a couple months ago and um, let me tell you I have fallen down the rabbit hole. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I've done so far on this. Let's see if I can hold this up. So I I wanted to make like a fall or Christmas themed table runner, but instead I ended up with this super summery one. That's okay. Now I'm just like three seasons ahead. Two seasons ahead. Um, let's see if I can. Ooh. So if you're not familiar with the quilt as you go style, it's basically the idea that you sew directly onto the batting therefore quilting as you go along rather than piecing the top with quilting fabric and then pinning it to batting and then quilt and then quilting it i hope i'm making sense um so the june taylor kits come with these like pre-print printed batting so i don't know if you can see here but there's numbers here and the instructions tell you what to cut your strips to and then you sew you place them on the numbers kind of like a paint by number and sew along so i have one more strip to do on the top here and then i need to trim it and i need to bind it um when I purchased this, I thought that it would be a good beginner project. I don't know that it is because the instructions are not beginner friendly. I mean, the actual doing of the project itself, once you get going, is very easy to follow um, and very simple. Like once I had everything cut and started assembling, it went pretty quickly. I had to look at a lot of videos before I started though because the instructions weren't really clear. Luckily there are some June Taylor videos online I could watch and then there's lots of there's lots of quilters on YouTube with instructions. Um, for example, in terms of binding, the instructions say bind using your preferred method. I don't know what that means. Um, but you know, lots of people on YouTube have shown me what that means. I watched several videos last night. So I think I will be able to figure this out uh, and possibly finish it today. A lot of plans for today, huh? Editing a video, finishing a cross stitch, finishing a table runner. We'll see. But I, I should be able to finish it in a few more, with a few more hours of work on it um, now that I've done my binding research. But just as a, just as a warning that if you are a super, super beginner, like I was, these kits don't come with super beginner instructions. But it is an easy project and I have managed to do it so you can too. Okay, so we've talked whips, we've talked finishes, we've talked FFOs, we've talked sewing, we've talked stitchy kindness, let's talk retirement planning. I think I've been pretty good this year. So as you guys may recall, if you've been following along for some time, you'll remember that I said 2019, no new charts. So up until November, I purchased only two charts. I purchased one chart um, in like a lapse of judgment, an ebook for a couple dollars, which I atoned for in previous videos and um, I allowed myself to purchase a chart for the Harry Potter exchange because I didn't have a Harry Potter chart and 
I felt like that doesn't count. It doesn't count. It was for an exchange, not for me. So um, in November, shortly before Thanksgiving, Debbie and I got together and we drove up to Needleworkers um, for a Saturday. And uh, there was lots of other women there stitching and we stitched and we ate snacks and of course we shopped. And I kind of decided while I was there, like, look, it's mid-November. I have bought one chart in 11 months for myself. One chart in 11 months. And um, I think that's pretty good. And <laughs> I decided no new charts was out the window and I was gonna treat myself a little bit for the rest of the year. And I am not sorry about it. But I, I didn't go too crazy. I, I think that not buying charts for 11 months really forced me to super evaluate when I see something whether or not I'm really gonna stitch it before I buy it. Um, so I think it was a good exercise. And even though I said, okay, I'm done, I'm gonna buy charts now, I actually did not go that crazy in the last month and um, really only bought things I super loved. So that being said, let me show you what I bought. So the first thing I got this is how you can tell that I've been spending too much time hanging out with Debbie and watching too many of her videos. Um, I saw this, <laughs> I saw this at Needleworkers and this is something that normally would not be my aesthetic. Um, it's totally Debbie's aesthetic. It normally would not be mine, but I saw it and I loved it and I had to have it. Um, so this is Blossom by Carolyn Manning Designs. I'll show you the picture first. That's really pretty. The kit came with these buttons and these um, little crocheted flowers. And I think this is pretty large size wise. What is this? This is okay. It's 154 by 167. So they're saying like 11 by 12. So that's a pretty decent size for a cushion with some quilting fabric around it. And that's kind of my plan for it. Um, so the called for fabric is Weeks Dye Works Clay. Um, I saw the model stitched on this called for fabric at the store. This fabric and this picture looks pink. When I looked at the called for fabric, not pink, brown. It looked way less good on the model than it does in the picture. Um, so the people at Needleworkers helped me find some fabric closer to this color. So let me show you. So I picked out this Belfast Linen in Cottage Rose. Whoops. There. Let's see if I can hold this up in a way that you can see all the floss. So it's these like muted brown colors, a little bit of green, these pale muted light brownie pinks. Um, and I'm doing it on Cottage Rose by Zweigart. I think it doesn't look as good on the camera as it does in person, but I'm really excited for that. I mean, I don't normally stitch on this color of pink, but I love pink and I think that this is going to look really nice in my living room. So like a floral pillow. So I'm excited for that. I might make that my new year new start if I, uh, if I can finish one more stitch maybe. I also got when we were at Needleworkers, I treated myself to one beautiful piece of fabric. This is a, uh, Belfast Linen 32 count treasure trove. It's a lot more blue in person than it's coming up in the lighting. It's like a beautiful shocker. I bought blue gray modeled fabric. <laughs> this is much more what I usually know. No, 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 no. This is much closer to what I normally go for than pink, but I am really excited to try something different. So, and then I got one more chart while I was at Needleworkers. This one just um, 
jumped off the shelf at me. This is Lucy Beam 11 Stitches in her garden. It's this little lady with a dress that looks like a beehive. She's got a flower hat, a watering can. This is super cute. It's not that big. And then um, I needed to order some floss for Turn Turn and I didn't want to ship one skein of floss by itself. So a couple charts fell into my basket. I got um, Brenda Gervais plum pudding because I was feeling Christmassy. Of course now I'm not feeling Christmassy anymore so I probably won't pick this up until like July or December maybe, but I think that's cute. Um, Dylan hates mice. He hates everything to do with mice. He thinks they're disgusting. I don't hate mice. I think they're kind of cute. And I especially think that mice doing people things is cute. Um, I really enjoyed Ratatouille. Big fan of the Cinderella mice, especially the scene where they're gathering all the beads um, for her dress. So. I don't know, that's cute. And I also grabbed, because this, is, this has been on my wish list forever, and it's usually only about four bucks, but I think it was marked down even more on sale, and I don't know, I just decided to get it just in case it goes out of print. Um, the Theron Traditions Needles and Pins, I'm sure you've seen this before. If you haven't, it says Needles and Pins, ne Needles and Pins, when a man gets married, his trouble begins. I like the strawberry border. I like the house. I like um, this goose down here with his like bent neck. And I really like, um, I don't know if these are supposed to be sheep. Um, I feel like they kind of look like gerbils. They're probably supposed to be sheep, but I'm gonna say they're gerbils because they're sized in relation to the goose and the rabbit. They've gotta be gerbils. So this is a gerbil farm. Um, okay, so four charts, five charts in one year, that's pretty good. I think I can high five myself. And uh, the last thing I purchased myself, because I'm a quilter now, <laughs> is it like BT Dubs, the whole time I have not been buying charts, what I have been buying is quilting fabric and while I can sew faster than I cross stitch, I also can't sew as fast as I buy fabric. So um, really it was just replacing like one addiction with another. But anyway, <laughs> um, since I'm a quilter now, I bought a quilt pattern. I was at, a, I was at Gotham Quilts getting some stuff for my um, dad's wife. She's a quilter, so I got her some fat quarters for Christmas. And while I was at Gotham Quilts, this caught my eye. French macaroon quilt. Um, this is not the colorway I am planning on doing this in, but I think it's cute and it looks beginner-ish friendly. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm like, um, in my mind, I'm going to sew like five quilts next year. Yeah, right. We'll see. <laughs> in any case. Okay. So that is, that is all my stashing. That's everything I stitched. That's everything I stashed. Um, that's everything I sewed. Let's just talk a little bit about um, the year in review and about my plans. So um, the year in review. So I started 2019 with 19 whips and my goal was to get down to 10 whips. That um, obviously did not happen. <laughs> However, um, I did pretty well because I did some counting this morning and I started 25 things in 2019, 25. And that includes the 19 things I started for Mania. Um, but I finished 24 things. Most of those things that I finished were Mania starts, but I also finished a few um, older whips. So I'm ending the year with only 20 whips. So I only added one. So I think that's pretty good. I only bought five charts and increased my whip count by one. Um, I didn't meet a lot of my goals. I obviously set my goals too high last year. I did not get around to submitting to the fair. I'm hoping for 2020 I will. I um, did not complete your whips. I got close. 
but um, the year of WEBS deadline is December 18th. It's really only 11 months long. It's not a full year. It's January 17th to December 18th. I didn't finish in time. It was just too busy. If it, if it had have gone till the 31st, I might have been able to do it because I did finish three year of WIPs, two year of WIPs projects um, in one month, but oh well. Um, let's see, I did not complete full coverage fanatics. I did two months and then fell off, off the face of the earth with that. It's just too much to keep up between that and Magical Stitches. So um, I didn't finish all the challenges in Magical Stitches. I kind of like, after my last video, I fell off the wagon a bit and I was just so focused on finishing things that I was sometimes doing the penalty stitches, but a lot of the times I was forgetting to post my homework and eh, it just got, <laughs> it just got to be too much towards the end of the year because I was just really focusing on finishing things that I didn't want to be bothered counting. That being said, plan wise, um, even though I have never completed Year of Whips, I'm going to try again in 2020. So at first I wasn't going to because the requirements are that you have to have 40 whips, which I don't have. And I didn't want to start 20 new things. But um, upon further reflection, I realized that Melanie said that we could, if we had a monthly sow or like a monthly design, we could count each part as a whip. So I have not completed still Fabulous Women and I have 20 women left to stitch. So those count as 20 whips. And um, that plus, I think I put in another 16 whips I currently have. I've tabled a couple for a little bit. Um, and then I have like four new starts planned. So all that to say, I'm gonna do your whips because all I have to do to complete this year is finish Fabulous Woman. Because I'm saying I have 40, 20 of those are the Fabulous Woman pattern. So if I complete Fabulous Woman, I will complete Year of Whips, um, which feels a little bit like cheating, but I think that's the motivation I need to finish that project. Like I do not want to carry that into 2021. And I mean, this is a Facebook challenge for fun. And if that's what will get me to complete that project, I think it's fair. So I am doing your whips um, and it is my firm goal this year to complete that. Um, I would also like to end Stitch from Stash in the Black. I, I did this year. I don't have the exact number in front of me because I need to calculate um, these recent finishes. And I think I also still need to calculate November because I don't think I wrote that down because it was so crazy. But um, I'm definitely in the black for Stitch from Stash this year. And I would like to be again, be again next year. And um, another goal I have is to FFO everything. I want to have an empty bag of shame by this time next year. Um, that I think is going to be the biggest challenge because I obviously, like most of you probably, would rather be spending my limited leisure time stitching mostly I like to try and get like two hours of sewing in every Sunday. Um, so unless I'm FFOing things by sewing them, like framing eats up a lot of time. It took me like three hours yesterday to frame that cheese thing. It just, it takes a long time to lace and like cut the board and fit it properly. And I, you know, it takes a long time and it's not fun. <laughs> I would much rather be spending that time stitching or sewing. So um, I think that will be the biggest challenge, getting everything FFO'd. But I got it because I have a huge bag of finishes sitting in that ottoman that um, I need to do something with. And um, finally, I think my last goal for 2020 uh, sewing wise is I've been gifted a lot of kits. I have another table runner kit, I have a bag kit, um, I have a wine tote kit, I have a lot of a scarf kit, I have a lot of kits um, that I would like to sew my way through and complete to clear up some space. Um, 
because the room that used to be our shared office has transformed into my fabric stashing room. And I think I need to uh, <laughs> work through some of that stuff and turn some of that fabric into objects. Otherwise, I might end up divorced. So I guess that's it. So I hope you all have a fantastic new year. I hope you're also enjoying this um, this time of year uh, like I am, that you're home cozy in your pajamas and stitching and uh, eating leftover holiday candy. And uh, I hope you, um, I hope you, I don't know. <laughs> I just hope you all have a happy new year and that um, you've met a lot of your stitching goals. And if you haven't, like I haven't, I hope you're not beating yourself up too much. So um, yeah, that's it. So happy new year guys. Um, and I will see you again in January or February when I come back for um, my first 2020 update. Bye.